My 34 female sister, Meg, 31, cheated on my ex-brother-in-law, Josh, with his best friend, Liam. They did it for over four years until Josh found out and broke up. Liam and Meg have been officially together for five years. My ex-brother-in-law has been my best friend since elementary school and my sister knew him through me. So, despite my saying it would make things uncomfortable, she insisted on hitting on him until he noticed and they started dating. My relationship with Meg took a toll on me because I was annoyed with her for doing this to my best friend. But we never cut contact because of my nephew, her son with Josh and my godson. One year ago, I received a large amount of money, an inheritance from my late boyfriend. Because I have a good financial condition, I decided that half would go to help my parents and siblings. My parents receive 50% and my four siblings, 12.5% each. My parents decided to renovate the house. Two of my brothers paid off their house debts. My, another sister, asked if she could pay for her IVF treatment with her girlfriend with that money, and I said yes. At no time did I control how they wanted to spend their money. Well, Meg was super happy with my help and talked about paying for her IVF with Liam, his infertility, and I hesitated. I'm still best friends with Josh and I can tell you what they did to him caused years of therapy to get him to start thinking about dating someone. I don't talk to Liam 99% of the time and I only help my sister because, after all, she had my nephew. I didn't go to the wedding and always made it very clear that it wasn't a relationship I would support. So I told her that I didn't feel comfortable giving her the money for this as it involves Liam, her and their relationship specifically, so I'd rather help in some other way, renovate the house, pay off debts, refurbish the house, and that I would take double care that the money didn't go to that. She started screaming, telling me to get over something that had nothing to do with me and that was years ago, and that I was treating her and my other sister differently because of the past. We argued a lot and I decided to create a fund for my godson that only he could handle at age 18 instead of helping her. This created even more mess because she claimed that I helped everyone but her and that I was cruel in denying helping her to have another child when they can't naturally. I really don't feel comfortable doing this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's your inheritance money. You can choose what to do with it. I think setting up a fund for your nephew is a brilliant idea. If she wants another kid so badly, she can cheat on Liam. Or maybe Liam can cheat on her with someone wealthy enough for an IVF. If she wants another child, she could try adoption. You are treating your two sisters differently. So what? One of them didn't put your best friend through the ringer. The money is yours. You could have chosen to keep the money. You could have given it to Josh, an art museum, or the local animal shelter. Meg doesn't have any say in what you do with the money. You are the idiot. To be accurate, you place conditions on her that you didn't put on your other siblings. I feel for Josh, and it sucks what your sister did, but if you're giving the inheritance money as a gift to your parents and siblings, you shouldn't be able to dictate what they do with the money. At that point, it's no longer a gift, but almost a bribe. You're telling your sister, hey, you can have this large sum of money, but only if you do what I want you to do. You offered them options like renovating the house or paying bills, but obviously having a child is far more important. To me, it feels like you're punishing them on behalf of Josh, but your sister is right. Also, what would happen if your sister and Liam adopt? Would you not make a trust fund for the child because it's Liam's child even though they're still your nephew? I kind of doubt it. I don't think so, honestly. The conditions are that OP doesn't like them as people anymore and doesn't want to support their relationship. She likes everyone else and supports their choices and relationships, but not Meg and Liam, and that's something OP gets to decide in her life. This is a great time to show Meg that actions have consequences. Honestly, she's lucky you're not Mina, because if it was me, I would have used some of the money to do something extra nice for Josh. My sister, 22, and I, 23 male, usually get along pretty well. However, we just got into a huge fight. My parents have gone on a trip for a week, leaving me and her home alone today. But in two days, my sister is also leaving with her boyfriend on a trip. About two weeks ago, she told me that her boyfriend was going to be sleeping at our house these two days before their trip, while our parents were away. This made me a bit uncomfortable, so I told her that he could spend the day with us, but I didn't really feel comfortable with him sleeping over. Even though it seemed like a relatively serious relationship and her boyfriend seemed nice enough, I don't really know him very well. I've met him two or three times and we just greeted each other. Plus, they've been together for only about four or five months. She got really mad and we fought a bit and then I had to leave because I wasn't staying home at the time and my ride was leaving. 
So the next day I texted her saying that it was only two days and then they were going away for a week alone, so I would really appreciate it if he didn't sleep over those two days. Last week I came back home and we didn't really talk about it, but today I brought it up, asking if he was going to sleep over and she said yes. So we got into a huge fight, the dude is coming over later and I just have to deal with it. Should I have just kept quiet and let him sleep over without saying anything? Am I even entitled to feel uncomfortable about this? Edit, my parents know they're going on a trip but don't know about him coming over. She didn't tell them, she said that they would say no. I'm not going to tell them though. I don't mind them being intimate, it's none of my business anyway. I just want to have a peaceful time without people over. You are the idiot. Why do you feel uncomfortable with it, huh? You say absolutely nothing about your reasons. She's going to be sleeping with him, not you. Who appointed you to monitor your sister's love life and judge how serious her relationships are? You're trying to control your sister because you're uncomfortable is wrong. Not the idiot. He's not trying to control her, but he doesn't want to feel uncomfortable in his own home. He put up a reasonable boundary and expressed his discomfort, which has nothing to do with their intimacy in the whole situation, tried to come to a compromise, and his sister completely brushed it off and ignored him. Everyone in these comments forgets that the boyfriend doesn't live in this house, but OP does, and the boyfriend is not entitled to spending the night, but OP is entitled to feeling comfortable and secure in his own damn house. Agree, not the idiot. If it makes you uncomfortable having a man you don't know sleeping in your house, yours as much as it is your sister's, then you get a veto here. She can stay with him if they want to be together. If your sister wants to have her boyfriend over regularly, as an adult can, then she needs to move out of mommy and daddy's house. Your sister knows your parents would say no, so she's trying to steamroll you. Pick up a phone and call your parents. My sister tried to do this to me once. Your sister knows your parents and their boundaries about their home and is choosing to disregard them. Everyone says she's known him for four or five months is a joke. We've had women on here with guys for years and didn't know half of what they did. This is your parents' house, so call them and tell them. Don't let your sister put you in the middle. Your sister is probably counting on your parents blaming you if something happens because you're the oldest and a guy. Leave it up to the parents that own the house to make the decision. This is ridiculous, however the family's opinions seem divided, so I want something unbiased. I, 33 male, have been married to my wife, 32, for four years. We've been together for 10. She has an older sister, Emily, who moved out when she was 18 or 19. My wife, Kate, has a great relationship with Emily. She visits us a few times a month. Sometimes she takes our kids out. And we also do some activities as a family with her, like hiking, going overseas, and so on. However, we do not ask her to babysit our kids as they have a nanny and my mother to do so. My mother has left her job to spend more time with the grandchildren of her own free will, and we do reimburse her. Now, Emily is into makeup. In fact, I've never seen her without heavy makeup. Even when she stays over, she comes out of her room with a full face on and wears waterproof makeup to the swimming pool or to the beach. Kate told me that she's been like this since Emily was 13. Over the weekend, our pre-tween daughter snuck into Emily's room when she was staying over and decided to play with her makeup and hide it. That was early in the morning. When I woke up, I bumped into Emily in the hallway while she was looking for her makeup, and I did not recognize her. She looked completely different from what I was used to and looked like a middle-aged woman. I nearly called the police, thinking someone had broken into her house, but Kate stopped me. However, Emily already heard me saying, Who the heck are you? and is aware I didn't recognize her. I have apologized and have explained to my wife and my sister-in-law that I didn't recognize her and thought a stranger broke in as Emily looked so different without makeup. However, Emily got upset and she and my wife called me an idiot for this. Emily left and Kate gave me the cold shoulder. My father-in-law and mother-in-law are on my side, but I wonder if I was an idiot. Clearly, they don't believe that you actually thought it was a stranger, but that you were making a rude comment about how she looked without her makeup on. As sisters, they've known each other their whole lives, so they can't imagine making that mistake. And frankly, it's hard for me to believe that you were really contemplating calling the police. Logic says that the extra woman in your house at 7am was the same one that was there at 10pm. Not the idiot if you are being honest. If sister-in-law really does do the full face 100% before leaving her room, I can guarantee OP would not recognize the woman in the early morning, while not fully conscious, if he's never seen her sans face before. Heavy, well-practiced makeup makes a huge appearance difference that can cause cognitive dissonance. 
It's like running into a friend you haven't seen in 20 years. You can see someone that you feel is familiar, but you just can't place them. It was a genuine mistake, but it would help if you had a lengthy chat with your daughter about how inappropriate it is to go into someone else's stuff and hide it. Perhaps something that's a favourite of the child should be hidden so the child can see how unpleasant the action actually is. I think your sister-in-law is a bit of an idiot here. If she constantly wears heavy makeup, she shouldn't be shocked when people who know her don't recognise her if she's wearing none. That's the problem with heavy makeup. Maybe it was a hit to her ego that you viewed her as a stranger after knowing her for about a decade. My sister Jennifer is a horrible person. My sister divorced her first husband, Wayne, to marry her current husband, Lance. Lance is also an awful person. Lance said he didn't want to raise Wayne and Jennifer's daughter, Andrea, and only cared about having biological children. As a result, Jennifer gave full custody to Wayne because Lance was more important to her than Andrea. Nobody in the family has spoken to Jennifer since. Andrea was a toddler when Jennifer left her for Lance. Andrea is in grammar school and was raised by Wayne and his wife, Emily. Andrea knows Emily is not her biological mother, but my niece says Emily is her real mum anyway, and she doesn't care to know who her birth mom is. We have a great child therapist ready if Andrea ever needs her, but Andrea says she hasn't needed it yet. Andrea's birthday was two weeks ago. We went to build a bear, and I bought her a bear with several accessories. I also got her a Mickey Mouse waffle maker. Andrea was so happy that she was smiling the entire day. Wayne and Emily posted pictures of Andrea on the family website eating Mickey Mouse waffles saying they were delicious, courtesy of myself. I blocked Jennifer on all social media. It was a friend who got a message from Jennifer that was meant to go to me. Jennifer explained in the message that my nephews, Colton and Ryder, were starting school soon, and she and Lance struggled to afford school supplies. And because I was buying fancy gifts for Andrea, I could surely spare $100 to cover Colton and Ryder's school supplies. I don't even know how Jennifer found those pictures, because the family website is supposed to be password protected. I told Jennifer that I would not be sending a dime to her or Lance. She abandoned Andrea for some guy. She doesn't get a comeback to the family she left now that she needs a favour. And besides, she and Lance are grown-ups, and if they can't afford things, it's not my problem. Jennifer told me how awful of an uncle I was, and kept trying to get me to call her. But I had my friend block her, and that was over. Several people, like my co-worker, are saying that I should be the bigger person for Ryder and Colton because they're innocent in this, and it's unfair they go without school supplies because their parents can't afford them. They said I could donate the school supplies directly so I wouldn't have to worry about Jennifer or Lance misspending the money. I have no relationship with my nephews, and people say that this is a great opportunity to become involved in their lives and be a positive role model where Jennifer and Lance may fail them. I get it's not fair to Ryder and Colton, but it's ridiculous for me to subsidize their schooling expenses while having no physical or emotional role in their life. Besides, if Jennifer and Lance genuinely can't afford school supplies, there are programs to help them. Not the idiot. The issue with helping your nephews this way is that it opens the door for your sister to demand more and more. Quote Lance back to him, Not my biological child, not my burden. Keep spoiling your niece. She is lucky to have people who love her. I would respond with, all the money you save by abandoning your daughter should be enough to cover school supplies. Any people trying to guilt you into giving Jennifer money are free to donate their own money if they are so concerned. Jennifer made her bed, as it were, and now she gets to lie in it. I hate when people say children are innocent when they're used as weapons to force contact. I hate being the bigger person and taking the high roads. If you open this door, you won't be able to close it. Also, someone gave her the password. Change it again. If she gets on the website, look for the person who is leaking it to her. I can't believe this happened, but here we go. I'm a 25-year-old female and I refused to pay my parents back. I started a clothing business after I graduated and it became successful. I now earn a good amount of money. I visited my parents, male 52, female 51, last week. I didn't visit them for months because I was so busy. They started asking me about my business. After asking me a few questions about it, my mom said that now I earn a lot of money, they're expecting me to pay back all the costs of raising me and I owe them some money. I asked them if they were joking because it was so random and they said no, so I told them that was ridiculous. That's their responsibility. I didn't choose to be conceived and born. I asked them if paying their bills was not enough for them. I pay all the bills in the house even though I don't live there anymore. 
They said that was a different matter, so I left the house. The day after, my dad messaged me. Don't come back here anymore. You should be grateful that we brought you into this world. I replied, thank you, but I'm not obligated to pay you. And then they blocked me. My siblings also told me that I should have just paid them back since I earned a lot of money. I didn't reply. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You should stop paying their bills and keep them blocked on your end. Children are not indebted to their parents for raising them. That is a one-way street, as in parents solely paying the cost of raising their children. Any money a child earns is their own. What kind of a sick family do you come from, OP? If parents had helped fund your business when you started, it would seem fair to pay them back that investment now you can, with a little extra if you wanted to be extra nice. But paying them for the cost of raising you? Do they think having children is an investment that has to pay off? That your siblings side with the parents is baffling. Did they get bullied into paying, I wonder? Your parents chose to have you. They're responsible for you until you're 18. That's what being a parent is. Time for mom and dad to stand on their own four feet. Your parents should be ashamed to be such losers that they must demand money from their daughter. Stop paying their bills or giving them any form of money. They're crazy people. Step away and cut contact. Update. I'm the one who suggests paying half of their bills. But they kept asking if I could pay for that month and they would pay for the next month and it just went on and on, so I decided just to pay their monthly bills. I started paying their bills two years ago. They also didn't pay for my college. I got a full scholarship. I didn't borrow any money from them to start my business. I found out that my parents didn't ask my siblings to pay them back. I'm the only one they asked. So I stopped paying their bills since I left that house that day. I will not contact them ever again. I'm wrong for paying their bills before, but I wanted to do something nice for them. Anyway, thank you guys for the advice. LOL.